Near the Himalayas is a small nation that's been secluded from the world and inhabited for a millennium. The people of this land have historically called it Drogpa, or the Land of the Thunder Dragon, and they are ruled by a king called the Druk Gyalpo, or the Dragon King. To the outside world, the country is known as Bhutan, and the nation is the only Buddhist kingdom in the world. Over two thirds of the nation are Buddhists, and the elites in the country have tried for decades to maintain their culture by keeping the nation secluded from the world. In fact, the people of Bhutan didn't have television until 1999, and they lived under the reign of an absolute monarch for generations. This started to change though with the establishment of a constitution in 2008, and with it came constitutional democracy. But how did this Buddhist kingdom go from an absolute monarchy to being one of Asia's most recent democracies, and how are they able to preserve their culture while embracing modernization? The answer lies in Bhutan's history. The country has to deal with handling influences from the outside world, while also trying to preserve their own culture. The land that would become Bhutan is believed to have been inhabited since 500 BC by people called Manuel, and they practiced a religion that worshipped nature and believed in spirits. One of the key aspects of the nation's identity would form in the 7th century through the arrival of Buddhism. At the time, the area was under the influence of the Tibetan Empire, and the king, who had recently converted to Buddhism, had two temples built in Bhutan. To attract converts, the monks of the temple absorbed the practices of the indigenous people. Bhutanese tradition states that Buddhism would become widespread spread in the area with the arrival of the Buddhist saint Padmasambhava from India in 747. The saint was invited to the area by a local king so he can get rid of demons, and after he did so, the king converted to Buddhism. Padmasambhava would leave for Tibet, but return later on to create monasteries and spread Buddhism throughout the land. This is when Buddhism would be fully entrenched in the area, and eventually the Tibetan Empire lost control of its territory in Bhutan. As a result, many kingdoms ruled by what the Bhutanese called Debs would rise up and fight for power. The land would have no central government until the 17th century, the arrival of a monk who was fleeing persecution in Tibet. His name was Ngawang Namgyal, and after subduing the various kings, he declared himself the spiritual leader of the land with the title Shabdrung. Namgyal would become Bhutan's first great historical figure, and from here Bhutan would start to resemble a legitimate state. They divided the land into regions with governors in charge of handling each one. He would prevent future invasions from Tibet and rebellious local lords with the establishment of giant defense fortresses. He created a legal code called the Sayi, which was heavily based off Buddhist law, and would establish an organized government to take rule of Bhutan. This government would be administered by two individuals, a religious leader with the title Jekempo, who was typically a respected monk, and a civil leader called the Drukdesi, who was elected for three years at a time by a state council of regional rulers and officers of the Shabdrung. The Shabdrung would have ultimate authority over all aspects of government though. Namgao would die in 1651, and his successors would almost always be who the people of the land considered to be his reincarnation. This would of course lead to some conflicts though, because not everyone agreed with who his reincarnation was. Ultimately, Bhutan would be troubled with regional rivalries between governors after Namgao's death that would eventually lead to the government's disintegration. The British, who by the 18th century were trying to get more influence in Asia, took advantage of Bhutan's regional rivalries. Throughout the decades, they even tried to pick off Bhutanese territory, and at one point in the 19th century, they even declared war. Regional rivalries in Bhutan would end when the pro-British governor, Yugen Wang Chuk, was able to dominate his rivals with the help of the British. The old system of government established centuries before would end at this point, and in 1907, an assembly of monks, government officials, and important families established a new powerful monarchy with Yugen Wang Chuk as the king, which they called the Druk Gyalpo. In return for the help he got from the British, Wang Chuk promised to let the British control Bhutan's international affairs, but only if Bhutan would be allowed to have internal autonomy. This foreign control of Bhutan's international status would pass to the newly independent India in later years, but eventually Bhutan regained that control. In 1926, Yugen's son, Jigme Wangchuk, ascended to the throne, and continued to keep central authority in his hands while keeping the nation somewhat isolated from the rest of the world to preserve their culture and Buddhist ideals, though they did build some western-style schools. In 1953, the third king, Jigme Dorji Wangchuk, would establish a democratically elected National Assembly, who would elect a Prime Minister. This was due to the rising desire for democracy by Bhutan's elite. The King was still supreme though, because he could veto anything the Assembly tried to pass. The struggle between pro-monarchists and modernists would intensify though, and the King would renounce his veto due to rising pressure. By the time of the fourth King named Jigme Singye, who came into power in 1972, democracy in Bhutan was going even further. Democracy in Bhutan would prevail in 2005 with the writing of a new constitution which would turn Bhutan from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy, which is similar to countries like the UK or Japan. 
The constitution would be made official in 2008 during the first elections, and a new king would also take the throne. The previous king stepped down from the throne to let his son, Jigme Kesar, be the king of the new democratic nation. The new constitution made the monarch simply a symbol of unity for the nation, and gave most of the power to the prime minister and the cabinet who are elected by the parliament. The parliament has two branches, a lower branch called the National Assembly with 47 members from different districts and parties, and are elected by a majority vote directly from the people. The upper house called the National Council has 25 members, with 5 members being appointed by the king, and the rest are elected like the lower house. The upper house reviews laws passed by the lower branch, and members are not allowed to have party affiliation so they can stay neutral. The constitution would also create a system of courts, with the supreme court replacing the king as the highest in the land. Buddhism continues to play a huge role in the country, with it being the state religion, and the position of the Jekenpo continues, but only as an advisor role for the king. Bhutan has had a long and unique journey to democracy, and it's still trying to modernize without having to sacrifice its culture. And they've done a pretty good job doing this. Throughout the centuries, Bhutan has proven to be able to walk the fine line between preserving culture and embracing modernization. While the country is not perfect, far from it actually, other developing nations should look at this as one example of staying true to your culture, while also attempting to modernize and improve your nation.